two weeks after Wondrum's death, Ursay's name was in the news again when he was pulled over by police for driving erratically. Get your feet together and your hands down your side for me, okay? Numerous bottles of pills were found in Ursay's car, and he ultimately pleaded guilty to driving under the influence. Was that the low point for you? No, not really, because the arrest was wrong. I had just had hip surgery and been in the car for 45 minutes. And what, they asked me to walk the line? Are you kidding me? I can barely walk at all. And so I you're just, saying you couldn't walk because you'd had the hip surgery, not because you were on any kind yes. of killers? I mean, I'm not saying that. It's a fact. So why did you plead to the misdemeanor? Just to get it over with. Look, at, I am prejudiced against because I'm a rich white billionaire. If I'm just the, the average guy down the block, they're not pulling me in. Of course not. Do you know what it's going to sound like if people hear you say they're prejudiced against a rich white I don't care what it sounds like. It's the truth. I don't, you know, Andre, I could give a damn what people think, how anything sounds or sounds like. The truth is the truth. And I know the truth. Okay, so that was the clip of Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Mersey the other day that had a lot of people heated. I mean, when I first saw an article on this clip, I thought it was complete clickbait, but no, it wasn't. I figured it was some sort of joke that was taken out of context, but the fact that he doubled down when the interviewer gave him out to correct himself just makes it so much worse. This obviously was not a good look for the Colts owner after his interview with HBO Sports about his past life struggles went completely viral. I will say this though, anyone can be a victim or be prejudiced against. It's just not common to hear it from a billionaire who owns an NFL team and no one really wants to hear that shit coming from him while so many people are struggling to keep their lights on or put food on the table. So this clip was supposed to detail Jim's life and all the struggles and challenges he went through growing up. He talks about his father's battle with alcohol, his own personal struggles with addiction, and the time he almost died from an overdose. Anyways, on today's segment of First Take, Stephen A. Smith and Kimberly Martin had some very choice words about this interview and pretty much blasted the owner, which led to Jim Mersey to respond publicly. Here's that clip from First Take. When he makes a statement like this, <clears throat> on one hand, you can laugh about it because of how ridi utterly ridiculous it is uh, being in America, the white power structure that exists. Obviously, you're a billionaire, you got money and stuff like that, and you're white, so Usually when people think about prejudice, you certainly don't look at that category. But for him to articulate that, it just shows how detached he is. I remember when Jonathan Taylor mm. uh, was looking for a new contract, and I remember how dismissive Jim Ursay came across. And I'm not one of those doggy, Kimberly, Molly, that looks at a certain situation, and, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant, you know, because when people bring up slavery, plantation mentality, and things of that nature that we've heard numerous professional athletes bring up over the years. I'm always very guarded in, in, in co-signing something like that because to me it dilutes what truly the egregious and insidious things that really, really happened in our nation's history. But uh, you also understand where they're coming from when they say it because they're talking about the mentality of the people they directly answer to. And when you see Jim Irsay say the kind of things that he say, it hearkened me back to Jonathan Taylor, how dismissive he was about this man and what he thought his value was. And it was like, we just move on without you, please. And all of this other stuff, when that man's putting his body on the line, you don't want to give him the money, you don't give him the money. I don't know of any white billionaire, and I happen to know a few, covering professional sports the way that I do. I happen to know a few. I have never heard a white rich man let alone a billionaire, literally say I am prejudiced. they're prejudiced, <laughs> I'm, I'm prejudiced against me mm -hmm. because it's against me mm -hmm. because I'm rich and I'm white. What's frustrating is his comments exemplify exactly what people think NFL owners are. Detached, um, just a, a total lack of awareness of their privilege and the, the flippancy of how they discuss their privilege. He came off like he's a victim. Um, and that anyone who has had as many opportunities as he has had, share, just by virtue of his name, the family he, he, he was raised in, and the color of his skin. Like, it, it, it bothered me on a lot of levels. And to, Stephen, to your point about Jonathan Taylor, that was the first thing I thought of because of how dismissive 
he was about with Jonathan and just overall the running back position and players in general. That to me is for him to ever act as though he is the victim in something uh, really truly bothers me because of his position. And really we talked a lot about privilege lately, I think in, in journalism as well and, and the lack of awareness of the position you have and maybe how you got there. And to make these comments, just it, it blew my mind. But I understand, I understand yeah. where you come from, dog, because it's like he says a lot he's of also, things. He doesn't think about anything else. He just thinks about he's himself because he's he's an he's an entitled old brat. That's really what it comes down to. And in the end, he's lucky that he's a National Football League owner because they print money for crying out loud. You got to be the stupidest person in the world to not make money as an NFL owner in this day and age. If he were an NBA owner, I assure you, it would be a problem because you'd have an abundance of players that would just look mm. at him with utter disgust yeah. and they, they're not going to boycott. It's not a Donald Sterling situation or anything like that. But with, I tell you this much, with free agency, you wouldn't want to go play for somebody like yeah. that. I can tell you that much. Yeah, so that was a harsh criticism. The panel of first take had for Jim Mersey. I think Kimberly hit the mark for the most part, which he said he seemed detached and acting like the victim in this case here. I'm not saying he can't be a victim, but in this particular case, it just didn't seem that way. Stephen A was pretty much spot on also, but I don't agree with his take about Jonathan Taylor and the criticism of how he handled the situation. That to me just seemed more like business, shrewd but still business. A lot of people in Jim's position would have done the same and the league as a whole pretty much devalued the running back position. It's not like Jim Irsay was doing this himself only. Saquon Barkley had the same issue in New York and countless other running backs were getting shortchanged because of how the league viewed the position. Anyways, the Colts owner didn't really take too kindly to what Stephen A. Smith and Kimberly Martin had to say on their platform and went totally off on social media. Here's what he wrote in the barrage of tweets a few hours ago. First take, you're going to get your ass sued because there was no alcohol, no illegal drugs, 29000 is low for me to be carrying in the 2014 arrest. I give away two to $10,000 to the homeless and needy on the street all the time and pass it on, making the world better. My grandparents came across Ellis Island with just their shirt on their back, penniless, and escaping Jewish concentration camps. I grew up in a horrible home where both my brother and sister died in a car crash in 1971. I've worked for my living and bought 30% of the Colts via bank loan. And on first take, the woman that preceded Stephen A, how dare you pretend to know me? I don't know your name and I don't care to. If my black mother, Dorothy, was still alive, you'd be in some big hot water. You are mean and ugly. You are a nothing burger. Dorothy Bloodsaw was my black mom. She carried me in the house in Lincolnwood, Illinois in June 1959 and raised me in the light of Christ. I would be dead if not for her unconditional love. She showed me that Jesus was my savior. I owe everything to her. So yeah, Jim had quite a bit to say in his response. He's obviously been through a lot in his life and from what I know, he's very generous with his money to the less fortunate. That said, I think this is just a bad take from him and him doubling and tripling down on this matter isn't really a good look. The internet pretty much lit up his ass on Twitter and I'm pretty sure Stephen A. Smith will have something to say about this tomorrow. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this matter? Should Jim pack up his phone and just call it quits?